Hello friends, so today we are going to discuss a problem from the latest lead code by weekly contest 37. Problem C, number of sets of k non-overlapping line segments. So it's a problem requested by a lot of my members and friends. So this is a DP problem. Uh, I will put this video in a DP uh, playlist I have already on my channel so you can like, check it out. But I will also make a separate DP playlist in which I will like explain a lot of DP problems from the scratch. And also I will like try to make that series after I will complete my backtracking series. So I will first upload the backtracking series. Uh, in which it covers a lot of problems like Sudoku solver and Queen's problem and so on which are very important in interviews also and then I have already uploaded a binary search series so you can also check that out it is very helpful and then let's start this question first so it's a DP problem uh, I have told you in the start but first read the question statement in which you are given n points in a 1D plane so which means that you are given a 1D plane which, which means that it is a just a line and you are given n points where the ith point is between 0 and n minus 1 so like you are given just n points and find the number of ways we can draw exactly k non overlapping line segments such that each segment covers 2 or more points what does this mean it means that okay let's assume that in this question you are given 4 points which is like this 1 like 0 1 2 3 okay now you are given these 4 points and you have to draw 2 line segments now how you can draw these two line segments you can like you can see like this you can either draw a line segment from 0 till 2 complete and then from 2 till 3 or you can draw like a 0 till 1 and like 1 till 3 so they should not overlap then you can also draw like this 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 so like then 1 2 like 2 3 and so on as you can see so if i have four points like this and now you are given like n which means that how many points are there and now k means how many line segments I have to draw which, which should not overlap so you have to find out how total number of line segments I can draw like this and that's the whole question now how you can uh, like process this question you can also pause down this video and try to solve this again but uh, I'll tell you in a very simple manner let's assume that I have some points okay so now in always DP problems how you can identify the DP problem first you can see that the constraints are small okay the constraints are uh, like uh, the constraints are also like n is up to 10 like 1000 only and also k is up to 1000 and so uh, it can be solved using a 2d dp and uh, now how you can approach this problem and like how do i get that this is a dp problem also you can get this idea from that you are finding out a modulo so and you have to also find out a number of ways so when you finding out a number of ways and you are doing a modulo and the constraints are very small so it's like it's uh, somewhat intuitive with experience that it's a DP problem. Okay, now how you think over such DP problems? So in DP problems, uh, you have to define suboptimal states. Okay, which means that the state you can actually calculate afterwards. Okay, so now uh, I will also put a backtracking series in which it's just a recursive formula. You have to draw a tree. So as you can see, let's assume that I have these endpoints and I have to draw k segments. So let's assume I want to draw k equal to 3 segments. Now, what are my output, like what are my states? I can start my segment with this point, like for this point, what I can do? I can start my segment at this point and then I can end at this point. Or I can end this, this point, I can end at this point, I can end at this point, this point and so on. Or I cannot start at this point, like I should not start at this point, I will start at this point. So then the segment can be like this, 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 this and so on. So for every point I have first two options I can either take this as a starting point which means the starting means that I can take this as a left point for some segment or I do not take this as a left point. So I have two opportunities. So let's assume that I have an OK function will count out how many number of segments will be there. Okay, which take the number of n and k. n means that how many points I have left and k means how many segments I have to draw in such points. So this OK function will take the number of n and k. Now, one state is I do not take this point. So, from this OK of n and k, which calculate how many number of lines or like how many number of possible combinations will be there when I have n points and k segments I have to draw. What is the total sum? So, for finding it this out, I will find out the OK of if I don't take this point, then I still have to draw k segments, and now I have only n minus points left. So, I will call this OK function with n minus 1 comma k I hope you get my point else 
I have if I start my left point with this, then I have some options, which means that my uh, segment can be like this of length one. So if my segment of of this length one, then how many points are left with me? These points, because see, I can also draw segment from this point. So this point is left. So then I will again recursively call O K of n minus one with K. This will calculate how many number of ways are there with n minus one points, and I have to draw k minus one segment because I have drawn one segment this of length one. So now I have k minus one segment left. Or I can do here is I can draw a segment of length two. If I draw a segment of length two, then how many points are left? N minus two points. So now n minus two points are left, and still I have to draw k minus one segments because I have drawn only one segment of length two. So how many segments are left? Because I have drawn one segment, and I have Total k segments should draw, so k minus one segments are left, and how many points are left? N minus two. Then again, okay. Of now, I can draw this segment as a length three, so n minus three. How many points are left? N minus three, and still I have to draw k minus one segments. And I will keep on doing this till n is greater than two, because see, if n is equal to two, then also like I can draw one segment, but if n is is less than one or like equal to one, then I cannot draw if there is only one point. So the base condition can be n should be greater than or equal to two. Also, if k turns out to be one, if k turns out to be one, then I can easily find out my answer. As you can see, uh, I'll draw some like some spaces. As you can see, like if there is some some points, as you can see, and I have to draw only one segment. Now, to how many total segments I can draw? See, to draw a segment, I need two points, one starting and one ending. So from these n points, if I take any two points n c two, if I choose any two points n c two, then I can get how many segments I can control. So it means that if I have k equal to one, I I should only draw one point one line segment. Then the answer is just n c two. How many points I have n c two because uh, I have to choose one starting and one ending point. So that's also very simple. So that's are the base condition when uh, I have, and also I can see that if there are Let's assume three points. Then the maximum number of line segments I can draw is two, because of this one. I cannot draw line segments of three. Like I cannot draw three line segments. Even I, like I can draw one line segment. I can draw two line segments. But I cannot three line segments because the 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 spaces is just two. And thus, in the number of segments minus one, which is the number of segments minus one, means that if I have three segments, then only two lines can draw. Maximum two lines can draw. I cannot draw more than two lines. And these are the base conditions for k equal to one. If this condition holds, or if n equal to one, then answer is just zero. Else, I will recursively call these functions and then find out my answer. And that's the whole logic. There's also one more logic, but I'll tell you later. So this is the uh, function. Uh, this is the function I'll call. So just just uh, like don't think of this pref dp uh, like dp. Just think over this dp. So I've initialized one dp, and uh, I've called this okay function with n and k. This is okay function. If k is equal to one, I have told you that it's just n c two. So n c two formula is n into n minus one divided by two. So it's just same. So n into n minus one divided by two. I'll, I'll store this value in like dp of answer. If n is equal to one, the answer is zero. Also, I have told you that if n minus one equal to k, if n minus one is equal to k, which means that I have uh, let's assume that my k is equal to two. And my n minus one points, I have three points. So the answer is just I can only draw one possible combination. And if uh, n minus one is less than k, I have already told it is answer zero. If I have pre-computed this DP earlier, I will print out minus one. But if this is not equal to minus one, I have pre already pre-computed it. So this is written out this DP state. Else, I have to find out the total. Total is what is the total? I can either not take this state. If I not take this point, I will add in total. Again, call this function with n minus one k. I've told you that there are two possible scenarios. Either I don't take this, so I will call okay with n minus one k, or else I will do a for loop and calculate these answers. So that's what I've done. Uh, I've commented out, but I'll tell you why. But I, like you can do a for loop from i equal to one till n and find out all the okay with n minus i and k minus one, and just this is the total amount and to add total for every value. As you can see, I, I was adding. And then dp is just a total value, and that's run fine. That's function run fine, but it give TLE for very large values. Though it is using dp, but you can still see that you can still optimize this code. How you can optimize this? I'll tell you. 
uh, see there is one more possibility as you can see when you do this second for loop uh, as you can see when there is some line segment I have two possibilities whether to take this point or not if I don't take this point then it is okay of n minus 1 because I have n minus 1 points left and k segments to move make else I have I will call ok function again but I will call with this n minus 1 and k minus 1 because I have drawn a line segment of length 1 and thus n minus 1 points are left and I have to draw among this n minus 1 points k minus 1 segments plus ok of I have n minus 2 line segments left like I have drawn a line segment of length 2 so n minus 2 points are left and I will again have to draw k minus 1 segments among them and so on so as you can see uh, as you can see let's assume that this uh, n is equal to 7 I have 7 points and k is equal to 3 I have 3 points uh, 3 segments I have to draw so this this value I'll, let's write out this value it is ok of uh, as you can see it is first n minus 1 so it's 6 comma 2 plus then uh, again 2 minus so it's like 5 comma 2 then again 4 comma 2 then again 3 comma 2 and so on then till the ending point okay so now you have to do up some of these points okay you have already calculate, calculated this answers you have calculated these answers which is fine you have stored these values which is fine but see if you hit a request for finding out ok of this value you have to still do a for loop and calculate or do a sum of all of these values I hope you get my point but see if I do an ok of this value for every state as you can see if I hit a ok of 5 comma 2 let's assume I hit a state of 5 comma 2 then I have to again do the same thing which is 5 comma 2 plus ok of 4 comma 2 and then again ok of 3 comma 2 and so on so as you can see I am actually recomputing these values again though these values are stored in the dp table that's not my point I am actually doing a for loop and finding out or doing a calculation again of this value but how we can optimize this we can just save a, save a prefix array prefix array what this, doing, this means that if I hit a OK function, if I hit a query of finding out a summation from this OK till this OK, I will store all these prefixes in this way that if I hit this query, I have the sum of all these numbers stored in here from this point till this point. If I hit this query, it is just a summation of all these numbers from this till this. So what you can do actually while finding out this value, which is the OK value, I, I actually have to find out the summation of this, 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 this and so on. So when I find out this value, I will also store this prefix in this, which is prefix minus this summation minus the total prefix. And also this summation minus the total prefix of this value and so on. So it's just storing the prefix value. I'm get, I hope you're getting my point because we are calculating this value again and again. So we can store out these values using prefix. So in this, we are just finding out the prefix. So what you can do, uh, the first thing is, uh, we don't have to do anything. If we don't take this point, it's just n minus one k. But if we take this point, then I will take out my sum with prefix of n minus 1 k minus 1 because I've taken this point. So the n minus 1 k minus 1 points are remaining. So I will call this prefix OK, will, will, which will tell me the prefix sum of this total thing. OK, and I will just add. Them. So how I am actually calling this prefix of OK, this prefix of OK is also another function, which is just a small function. So what it actually does is, does is, is actually like check that whether I have actually pre-computed this value again. So I will just print out that value or like return out. If I don't compute this value again, I'm actually adding this value. So what this prefix of OK is, if I want to calculate this value, what I will do, I will call this, I will find out the value for this function and the prefix till this point. So this is a little bit complicated, but the thing here is, see, if I want to find out the prefix for this till this point, the total prefix, if this answers to the prefix till this point, how I can do, I have to find out this value plus the prefix of this part. So for prefix of this part, how can I find out? I have to find out this value and prefix for this part. So for finding out this part, I'll find out this value and the prefix till this part. 
and that's what I've done. I'm actually recursively calling out the prefix for finding out this dp value, prefix of dp. I'm actually calling out n minus one and ok for n and k. So this is the ok function. I'm calling this ok function again with this n and k and this n minus one k. And then you have to just draw this value so, so it will become more intuitive when you draw these values. And this is the prefix sum. So in this problem, we have actually used a dp along with prefix sum. Actually, it's just using two dps. I hope you get my point. And that's the logic for this problem. It's a little complicated, but uh, if you draw this, and this is the mod and uh, add a multiply function I actually always used to prevent using some complicated mod values because I don't want to use them. So that's the standard mod values I'm using, mod functions I'm using. So you can also see a mod value functions video I've already uploaded on my channel. So you can also check it out. I hope you get the logic and intuition for this problem. If you still have any doubt, permission now. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next one. Keep coding. Bye.